This is a mathematical graph that uses complex numbers. These numbers can be hard to work with, but that hard work pays off, especially when we get interesting visualizations such as these. To understand how these graphs work, let's start here. This animation is a way to graph this polynomial. But why are we animating it? Can't we just graph it using an x and y axis like normal? This more typical view shows all of the real numbers as inputs, but not the complex numbers. And for this polynomial, the complex numbers are a lot more interesting. But graphing them in the same way would require four dimensions. So we need a different way to display. One way is this animation. At each frame, we're showing the output of the polynomial with a circle as the input. For this frame in particular, we use the circle of radius 2. All of the complex numbers that are 2 away from 0. This includes 2, negative 2, 2i, negative 2i, and all the points in between. We input each point into the polynomial and then graph the output. So now we see some outputs of the polynomial, but maybe we'd like to see all outputs. We can do this with an animation, starting with an input of radius 0 and going to radius infinity. In this way, we pass through every circle and we get to see every output. We just have to use a dividing factor to keep the graph from exploding as we go to infinity. And now, we have an animation that graphs this polynomial for all complex numbers. And we notice, because our input is always a closed loop, the output is also always a closed loop. And this frame here is the loopiest, so let's focus on that. The input for this frame is the circle with radius 1, which is called the unit circle. And this polynomial is special because it has 8 different roots all on the unit circle. Roots are inputs that give 0 as an output, so our output graph must pass through 0 8 different times, once for each root. But remember, it's a closed loop so it has to curve a lot to get each root to zero, giving us this cool shape. And this is not an isolated example. Here is a similar polynomial, which has six different roots all on the unit circle. Let's watch its animation. Just like before, when the input is the unit circle, the output has to curve around to get all of the roots to zero. And we can see this even better if we add points. We'll put points around the input circle corresponding to the roots, and this is what that looks like on the output. The points all converge when the input has radius 1. And here is that first polynomial with points added. These two polynomials are part of a family called the cyclotomic polynomials which are defined by having certain roots all on the unit circle. There is a cyclotomic polynomial for each natural number. This is the seventh cyclotomic, and this is the fifteenth. But why is it the fifteenth if it has eight roots? These eight roots are a subset of the fifteen evenly spaced numbers anchored at one. So why not use all fifteen? Well, first of all, that would give us a boring animation. But more importantly, these 8 points are the ones that are new to 15. These 3 are themselves evenly spaced, so we would have already seen them in the 3rd cyclotomic. And we would have seen these 5 in the 5th cyclotomic. So that leaves us with just 8 points that appear for the first time at 15 so they are the roots of the 15th cyclotomic. I like to think of this using fractions. This point is 3 fifteenths around the circle from 1, and 3 fifteenths can be simplified into a fifth, so this point would have appeared in the 5th cyclotomic. 
but this point is 4 fifteenths around the circle, which cannot be simplified, so it is a root of the 15th cyclotomic. With our other example, the 7th cyclotomic had 6 roots. Because 7 is prime, none of the distances for these points can be simplified, except for 1 itself. And this happens with all of the other primes. The 11th cyclotomic has 10 roots. The 13th cyclotomic has 12 roots. And these prime cyclotomics have similar looking animations. There are also some other related cyclotomics. The 14th appears to have the same animation as the 7th, but if we color the right half of our input circle, we can see that the 7th and the 14th are flipped versions of each other. And this is due to their roots. The roots of the 14th are a mirrored copy of the roots of the 7th. The same goes for other primes and their doubles. But not for primes and their triples. The animation for the 5th cyclotomic is quite different from the 15th, and the 7th is quite different from the 21st. But let's notice, as the 21st approaches radius infinity, the points come together in groups of 3. This happens because there are 12 roots, or 4 times 3. For the next triple of a prime, the 33rd cyclotomic has 20 roots, or 4 times 5, and this time we see a 5-pointed star. The 39th cyclotomic has 4 times 6 roots, and the points again arrange in groups of 3. The 51st has 4 times 8, and we get an 8-pointed star. The number of roots influences the graph, because every root adds a loop. Here, with 44 roots, we get 44 loops, which causes this 11-pointed star. We see something else interesting with these triple primes if we hide the roots and just show the other points. They always arrange into two phantom curves. And we can go further with these points. We can use them as the roots for their own polynomial. Going back to those 15 evenly spaced points, the 8 points that are new to 15 are the roots of the 15th cyclotomic, and then the other 7 are the roots of the 15th inverse cyclotomic. Here is the 21st inverse cyclotomic, and the 33rd, Now, there are some more things we could look at, but as the numbers get larger, it's harder to see what is going on. But I do have one more fun animation to show you. Instead of animating just one polynomial while changing the radius, let's freeze the radius at 1 and then change the polynomial. We'll start with the first cyclotomic, then transition to the second, then the third, and continue. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, I have a video that goes deeper into the math behind cyclotomic polynomials and shows a different way to visualize them.